We've been coming out to this farm for a very long time. Well, the area, as you, a lot of you will know that it, it, this is a, a newer space, but it's been part of the Nolan family for at least four generations. Uh, Jack Nolan, uh, Chris's dad was, uh, you know, pretty much born and bred in this area and still works his farm. This is a working farm and today, instead of having uh, someone not so related to the festival come and talk to you, we thought we might as well ask the man himself. And I'd like you all, please, to make Mr. Jack Noel very warm. We're going to have a chat with him right now, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Noel. And we're going to sit down and do it because it's Sunday morning. Here it is. How are you? Wow. Anyway, we might as well kick it off. How's the festival been for you so far, Jack? Well, it's been very warm um, <laughs> and sticky, but uh, I think it's been a great festival um, so far. Uh, what I see, it, it amazes me to see so many people having a very good time, relaxed, and uh, yeah. So Chris and Mary having a good time with you? Yeah, Chris uh, opened it yesterday morning, uh, yesterday afternoon, and uh, we were a little worried when he was out in the van and when we got him up here, as soon as he saw the people and the crowd, he just brightened up and smiled and did everything right. It, and it, it, was, it was so hot, like, uh, yeah. he, he seemed like he was in the shits there for a time, and as soon as he did hear the people and, you know, the, the God plans, family, he, he, he fired up, didn't he? He did fire up. Because Christopher does suffer with his brain injury, he, he does get affected with the heat. He, he, he gets very hot at times. That's one of the problems with him. But uh, yeah, it was unbelievable how he fired up. All right, well, that's the present. But how about we talk about sort of the history of you and your descendants and your relationship to this whole area and the farm and the, and the uh, land itself? Well, that's right. That's. Uh, I think you said four generations. Christopher, we six generations. Um, on five, um, our people, uh, our ancestors came here on in 1880, uh, 1855. Um, that was my great great grandfather. I think <laughs> it goes back so far. I can't remember them all, but um, and uh, and that was um, Patrick. And um, I've got a little mark there, but they had a son, Patrick, and Patrick was the guy that actually took up the the title here, um, which is uh, uh, coming up in a couple of years. It'll be a hundred hundred and sixty years. So the family, the family's name. Yeah, this particular land that uh, this festival's on is on a title of Peter Nolan, and that. Um, and uh, that was uh, his title uh, of land. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a long time. Now, speaking of history, uh, I've been asked to ask, and I've, all, I've often wondered, can you tell us how, like, all these, these massive pine trees and how this all came to be a part of the farm? That's right. Well, that was, um, um, that was my grandfather, um, who was... Peter's son, and uh, he only Peter only had one ch one child, and that was John, my grandfather. He had ten children, um, and uh, one of those was my dad, of course. But uh, when he when he retired, he retired in Ballarat, and um, he used to come down on the train, well, the afternoon train and come out here and plant these pines around here uh, and he said when I'm dead and gone it'll be somewhere for the birds to nest well I don't know what he th <coughs> think today we've still got a lot of birds but they're different color they're different shapes and some are very beautiful do you think he planted them with a view to having a music festival here over the last 25 years well, that, that's a big question. I don't know. <laughs> he loved the land, and, and I think that's what brings the people here. Uh, well, look, speaking of the land, uh, 
uh, as we said, this is a working farm. <laughs> Excuse my voice, it was a big Saturday. And what what is this place like without sort of all these monkeys hanging about and 10,000 people running around and destroying your place? Well, um, it's certainly different. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I really enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Do you prefer it? I think it's... These people are easier to handle than about three or four thousand sheep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think it's in the um, like all um, your man uh, I don't know whether you call it the manual, but it's this year's program. You see a paddock with the sheep just grazing. Um, yeah, we do graze it. This particular block here, where the stage and all that is, it was nearly un. Uh, it was unused land. It was bracken fern. If you know what bracken fern is, it grows very high. Rabbit burrows, uh, sand, um, and we only started to graze the, this part of the block up about where the pink flamingo is. So this was all cleared, and because um, our first site was up the road, um, and that was on crown land. Uh, um, controlled by Parks Victoria, and we outgrew it. Yeah. The festival outgrew the, the area. And I said to the boys, I said, I think I've got a better spot. And uh, we came down here, which is land we own. And uh, well, they hesitated for a while. They were gonna hire a stage for the first event because they weren't sure whether they were gonna get the stage in the right area. Just out where all you people are sitting, there was a huge pine tree there that had to come down. It took us weeks to get rid of it. And uh, we had a bulldozer in the area and there'd be a mountain of sand of nearly as high, half the height of those pines, uh, which was spread out to give the um, nat natural amphitheater a bit more shape. And uh, yeah, so they built the first part of this stage. This stage has been extended and extended. Now you say that uh, the festival outgrew the first site, and uh, I suppose many of us want to know how uh, Chris convinced you in the first place to have a couple hundred of his mates up here for a festival. Way back in what year was it? Not ninety. 91. Ninety-one. Oh, not uh, actually ninety. It was. Well, how uh, the hell did he convince you to do that? Well, he was, a part, <coughs> he was a party animal and I suppose Mary and I, <laughs> we, we weren't much better. But uh, we used to run uh, yeah, a bit of a competition in town, local uh, balls, and uh, I used to do the hall and she used to do the church one, so it was a bit of a competition between us who could put on the better show. And uh, Chris was only young at the time. Then when he, uh, he had a big... 18th birthday party uh, on the farm and uh, after that a lot of the guys used to come up from uni to the balls and we'd hire the local school bus and take them into town. Mary used to warn them to behave, not to embarrass us and they used to come up through the, through the night and say are we going alright? <laughs> but uh, yeah anyway they all passed then they'd come out home afterwards and party on from early hours of the morning. So we're sort of used to parties and uh, people. Uh, and then he, when he approached us, uh, well, the first time uh, when they, he and Pooley dripped this idea up was to uh, bring the city people to the bush. And uh, I think they sold a few tickets, very few but never got it off the ground. That was 90. And 91, I remember him coming up about October and saying, well, if we don't get it off this year, it's a, it's a flop. And I said, where are you gonna have it? Oh, up the road, the paddock we call Kelly's. He said, you get the tractor up there and knock a few ferns down and we'll put it there. That's how it started, 250 people. And I said to someone yesterday, I think there were more drunks at that per head of population than what there is today. <laughs> they were all drunk. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just going to say, look, obviously everyone here uh, know, knows Chris's story as well. You know, we, we love it when he opens a festival. How, how's he actually travelling? He's going well at the moment. Um, yeah, he's, he's amazing. Um, 
I don't know how I'd cope with a thing like that where I couldn't speak, couldn't see, because uh, he was always a man of words and could make conversation to anyone. Um, his mother said he um, got his power of arguing with her, uh, but uh, yeah, his mother, you know, it's, it's a great thing. I know at times it, it must be very hard and he gets a little upset and, and I think it's because it's just frustration that he can't, uh, that he can't, you know, take, uh, participate. But uh, yeah, but life goes on, and uh, just a simple thing last year, which should have been a simple thing, it was after Meredith, 12 months ago, he went back and he ended up in hospital for two weeks. And they had all the doctors and specialists and everybody uh, trying to find out what was wrong with him. They couldn't nail it. And uh, it turned out that he had shingles. And as Mary said, they asked him so many questions, you know, this, that, and that. But no one asked him, did he have an itch? And of course, that's what it was. Once they got on top of it, it was fairly easy fixed up. But he would have gone through hell because his dermatologist said that because he couldn't scratch and that, it would be absolutely unbearable. Yeah. Well, look, we have to wrap this up. But I suppose we'll finish by asking you, is there, is there an act that, you know, Peely and Matt and the rest of them uh, haven't booked that you would have dearly have loved seeing play here? Yeah, well, I said that, but of course it's too late now. Yes, I know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> the late Johnny Cash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that would have been a side of it, yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, so Johnny Cash was the, the one that you wanted to see and they let you down basically? Well Chris, Chris actually made a promise that um, he said the day we wrap it up he said we'll bring Cash out live and I did hear that Cash wasn't well and that's some years ago now I think, I think he died in 2003 or something um, I said to them when uh, so Chris wasn't you know he was still that was in, he was still injured and I said somehow or another you got to tell these blokes they've got to get their act together because it'll either be cash or me gone, so <laughs> at this stage I'm still here, but poor old Johnny's not. Well, look, let's hope you're here for a long time. The festival's here for a long time. And ladies and gentlemen, please, can we thank Jack Nolan and the fan for having us for so long and for so many good times. Jack Nolan. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you all. And behave yourselves.